My guest right now is Russ Barber. Russ, uh, we are in your backyard. You have a bed and breakfast, but you do more than that. Uh, let's talk about this ballooning. Uh, first, let's talk about the bed and breakfast, because I guess that's where people stay if they're going ballooning. Uh, tell us about the house. Well, it's uh, 1860, uh, old uh, house that I renovated, mm -hmm. and uh, I put uh, four bedrooms in there, and people come and stay, and take a balloon ride, mm -hmm. and uh, and or they don't have to; they can uh, just come and stay if they want to, and a lot of them do. It's about fifty-fifty. Yeah. Well, now, how did you get interested in ballooning? Well, I think as a as a small boy, uh, I always loved aviation. Uh, I I put a lot of models together, and uh, and somewhere around I think it was about thirty, I got a little airplane, and started flying and uh, got my license. And uh, then one day a friend of mine said, "Hey, come and take a ride. I got a hot air balloon license." So I went and took a ride with him and got totally hooked. And then uh, bought my own balloon. Is it is is hot air ballooning uh, more of a rush than airplanes? Uh, it's more uh, it's it's more quiet. <laughs> yeah. I I relate it as being more romantic. It's not uh -huh. a rush. Uh -huh. I tell a lot of the young people if you want to rush, uh, you go to the roller coasters. <laughs> it's a lot slower, gentler. Mm -hmm. As you're as you're flying, there is no sound. Other than the, other than the jets in the in the gas, right? Yeah, occasionally the burner. You have yeah. to fire heat, keep heat into the envelope or the right. bag, mm -hmm. and uh, so occasionally you have to burn. And that's yeah, that's the only noise up there. It's very quiet, very well, relaxing. Do you, you you don't really have a whole lot of steering mechanism? No, we're at the mercy of the wind. Mm -hmm. uh, you can change uh, your forward uh, uh, direction by going up maybe 1,500 feet and you may, 10 or 15 degrees, you may change your uh, line of, uh, of direction of your flight. Mm -hmm. So basically then if you see some trees coming up, you can go above them, but that's about all. Right. You can, you can peg your, your altitude or your height above the ground uh, right on. You have, a, you have an altimeter in there and you can, you can keep your altitude right at level flight. But your forward direction, that's, that's another, that's another uh, item. Well, now, your garage, uh, where you could store three cars, is not a three-car garage. It's a balloon garage. That's correct. Uh, I have a uh, FAA certified repair station uh, where I repair, uh, rebuild, and annual balloons uh, during the year. Uh, and that's what I use my three-car garage for. It's... <laughs> And I have sew machines in there, and sew and, and repair. Wow! And these uh, machines, uh, these sewing machines, are not the latest high-tech computer models, are they? No, these are old singers, probably older than we are, <laughs> much older. But they're very reliable. They're very rebuildable, and uh, they're they're very uh, very reliable. They're commercial machines, mm -hmm. so they're used to commercial work, but. Uh, they're they're really uh, they're really uh, not the top of the line, uh, not the uh, modern type, but they're very dependable. Well, we're here in upstate New York. Uh, are there a lot of balloonists that come to you for help? Yeah, I right now I think uh, I have like 50 uh, balloons that I do annually every year, at least once for their annuals, mm -hmm. and then if they tear them or burn them, uh, then I uh, then they're in. More than once. <laughs> well, they're very delicate items. Uh, that balloon is, uh, y you showed me the fabric, and, and uh, I mean, you've got to really be careful. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a ripstop nylon. It's uh, like a, a parachute material, mm -hmm. very light, um, and uh, it's fire retarded, but not fireproof. Uh, it will, if you put heat to it, it will melt. But the minute you take it away, then it, it will stop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, and, and you repair them, so if someone uh, happens to get a little too close uh, with, their, uh, with their burner, uh, you, you, you can take care of that. Yes, uh, we'll, we'll take that panel out, uh -huh. and we have repairable fabric, and we'll cut a new panel, 
and then sew that panel in and it looked just like new. These baskets are quite unique uh, and they're made out of, um, of a certain material. Yeah, they're, they're made out of wicker. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason being uh, wicker is very resilient. Uh, it's very light, uh, which with a balloon, uh, you're looking at how much weight you can carry, not how many people you can carry. So having the basket light uh, and also very, very strong, very resilient for some hard landings sometimes that we have in the high wind. But uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're very, very strong. Now I know that balloons go up in the early morning and late evening and of course that is the, probably the best time because there's very little wind? Yeah, uh, we, we, you have to remember we can't steer. Uh, we're at the mercy of the wind. Wherever the wind is, direction is going, that's the way we will go. And we go early in the morning because early the winds are always light or late in the afternoon and they're light again. But during the day you get a lot of thermal activity in the summer and those thermals you can't overcome with the burners not strong enough. I understand. Well now, have you ever been up and the wind has come up? I mean, does that ever happen? It does occasionally. Uh, it's 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 kind of interesting. It becomes an interesting landing uh, <laughs> because uh, the uh, the envelope or the bag does not want to stop, and the basket once with all the weight and it touches down, it stops. But it it'll drag the basket along the ground. But as long as you stay in the basket, the balloon will eventually deflate and you'll come to a rest. Okay, so evidently you can't do this by yourself. You evidently have a ground crew because they're going to have to meet you or that basket's going to drag you, right? Yeah, we. I have, uh, usually you need three people. You need one on the crown line to hold the balloon down when you're putting the heat in it. And you need one person on each side of the throat. And uh, I have a crew that goes and helps me and then they chase in a chase vehicle and uh, I'll be in radio contact with them, tell them when I'm land, and they'll hopefully be there when I land to help me put the balloon down. <laughs> they'll find you somewhere, right? Yes. They'll look in the air. Yeah, uh, right, right. <laughs> exactly. But now, I'm showing my viewers this huge fan, which they probably would love to have on their patio. Uh, now, that is to get the air inside the balloon when you've laid the balloon on the ground, because you can't put, the fi you can't put any of that gas in it yet, right? Correct. Uh, we stretch the balloon out flat on the ground and then we point the fan into the throat, open the throat. There'll be somebody on each side holding it open and then we start the fan. It's a nine horse uh, engine on it and it's very strong. It has a little propeller like an airplane and uh, it forces air into the balloon and eventually you get enough air in to fill it up nice and full. Then you can point the burner inside the balloon and start to heat, and then it'll rise up. And then it, will it rise on itself, or do you have to pull it up? No, it will rise. You get enough heat in that, and it uh, it only takes about two minutes mm -hmm. with that heat. That burner's 11 million BT, BTU, 11. and yeah, and that puts out a lot of fire, a lot of heat, mm -hmm. and it'll eventually, a couple minutes, two or three minutes, it'll stand right straight up. Well, it'll want to take that basket up immediately, so the basket evidently is anchored to the ground at this point. Yeah, it's tied off to the van, so uh -huh. it can't go, but the uh -huh. crew will, on the throat will come back to the basket, and immediately as it stands up will hold me down until I'm ready to go. And at such time, we'll un untie the, uh, the crown line, the, the tie-off line, and uh, they'll take hands off, and I'll put a little heat, and we'll be up and away. Wow. Now, it, when you're in the basket and you're starting to come down, do you feel the descent? Uh, if you're low over the ground and you can see the tree line, you, you then can feel it. But if you're up three, four hundred feet, uh, you have no depth perception of anything around you to relate your dropping. So you really don't know that you're dropping. Mm -hmm. What about what about when you're flying? Uh, how far or how high can you go? Well, you can go just about to any altitude you want. Um, and um, it, it, the only thing is, if you go up too high, then you need oxygen. You get about thirteen thousand. But normally, you can't see anything up there. So we usually fly. I like to go around eight hundred 
to uh, 1,400, 1,500 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, above that, yeah, you don't really, it's just everything is a mast on the ground. Mm -hmm. You really don't see much of the countryside. Do you meet any aircraft at that level? Oh, you see them go by occasionally, okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, we, by the way, have the right-of-way over all aircraft because we're less maneuverable. Mm -hmm. So we do have the right-of-way. They have to give way for us because we can't steer. But uh, they're they're looking, they're watching, and and uh, we're looking for them too. So let's go back to the B and B because uh, I, I want to uh, make sure uh, my viewers know how many rooms you have and what amenities you have at the B and B. Right. Uh, I have I have three bedrooms that I rent out. Mm -hmm. uh, each has its own bath, t uh, shower, and tub tub and shower. Uh, each room has its own heat. Each room has is air conditioned, has its own air condition. They can set the temperature wherever they want it, and uh, that uh, that comes. Uh, we do a full country breakfast in the morning. Uh, if they're going flying, we get up early, and we'll have juice or coffee before we go, or maybe a muffin. And then when they come back, they have a big breakfast. I, I had to ask you about that because a number of balloon flight companies will have champagne. And I didn't know whether or not that's to celebrate the fact that you got down or you're going up. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good question. Yeah, champagne starts from over uh, years and years ago, way back in the 1700s when they first yeah. took their balloon flights. Uh, a lot of the farmers and landowners were not really very friendly when they landed in in their in their farms, uh -huh. and so they found that by offering one of their best prized bottles of champagne it would soothe their their uh, frustrations a little bit mm -hmm. and we've continued to uh, continue uh, the tradition but it also has a primary uh, a feature that um, we offer the landowner it's a token of appreciation sure it's we give it to them telling them it's not expensive it's the thought behind it that the bottle is for thank you. Mm -hmm. It's our way of saying thank you for using your land mm -hmm. to put our balloon down. Because if you think about it, every time we take off, we're going to be trespassing when we come down <laughs> on somebody's backyard or somebody's farm. But um, no one's ever refused that champagne, have they? Nobody's <laughs> ever refused it. No, they haven't. They usually they they say, "Oh, you didn't have to do, do that." that. Would one their, their hand is out to take it anyway? But we really want them to take it. And Russ, uh, if anyone wants additional information on the B and B and the ballooning, uh, how can they get that? Uh, they can go to my website, and uh, it's uh, www balloon bed and breakfast dot com and uh, they can see all about the balloon rides all about the bed and breakfast and just they can see the history my history of ballooning and uh, and just about everything that we have to offer here is on there prices is on there also